I asked my audience what they wanted to know about Oxford, engineering, and my life. I've really enjoyed seeing all your questions. Now it's time for some answers. My name is Sam, and this is Oxcentric. Let's start off with our first question, which is one that several people asked. Why did you choose Oxford over Cambridge? One of the biggest factors in my decision was that my brother did his undergraduate degree at Wadham College here in Oxford. Whilst visiting him at university, I fell in love with the city. His experiences made studying at Oxford feel like something attainable, rather than this distant option I might have never considered. Additionally, it also demystified the admissions process, which doubtless helped me make a better application. Another factor that swayed me was getting a place on the unique summer school run by the University of Oxford. Participating in this fantastic scheme showed me both that I could really enjoy being a student here, and that I responded well to the teaching style. I also felt that having Unique on my academic record might be more helpful in applying to Oxford rather than Cambridge. So, in brief, the three big reasons I applied to Oxford were that I loved the city, I knew a lot about the realities of studying there, and I felt uniquely placed to make a strong application if I put the effort in. Though Cambridge is obviously a great place to study, a few things pushed me away from applying. One of the biggest is that to study engineering, some colleges required STEP maths, a notoriously tricky maths admissions test, which I wasn't confident I would perform well in. Additionally, this would have meant having to sit two admissions tests, the ENGAR and STEP, which seemed like both more work and more opportunities for failure. I also understood that Cambridge was a smaller city with less to do, which suited me less than the perfectly medium-sized Oxford. The next question is on a similar theme to the first. Some people say that Cambridge is better than Oxford for engineering, so why didn't I choose Cambridge for that reason? This was due to my own priorities. I wasn't worried if I was going to the UK university with the best reputation for engineering. I was far more concerned about whether I would be able to carry on my extracurricular activities, like singing, and just simply how much I would enjoy studying there. League table rankings tell an incomplete story because there are so many other factors to consider in the student experience. As an aside, I believe that Oxford and Cambridge are very similar in terms of teaching quality and style for a variety of subjects. Though I've experienced only one personally, I'm sure that both institutions have intense and intellectually challenging engineering degrees. What GCSEs did I get? In my GCSEs I got 9 grade 9s, 1 grade 8 in photography, 1 grade A star in French, and 1 grade A in music. I have a mixture of letter and number grades because I sat my GCSE French and music early in years 9 and 10 respectively. I want to reiterate that my GCSEs are quite strong even for an Oxford student and that there is no precisely defined set of GCSEs that you need to get in. Also, remember that your grades are assessed in the context of the school that you went to, which helps to make the process fairer. Another related follow-up question? Hi Oxcentric, these are my GCSEs, will I still have a chance of getting into Oxbridge? I get this question a lot from different students. The truth is that GCSEs are one small part of a much larger application process, and in my personal opinion, are not an element that majorly affects someone's chances of getting in. Obviously, good GCSEs are helpful, but they are nowhere near as important as the personal statement, admissions tests, and interviews. That said, the rule of thumb I apply is that if the majority of your GCSEs are at grades A star to A, or grades 7, 8, and 9, then your GCSEs are absolutely good enough for Oxbridge. One or two mediocre GCSE grades are frankly very unlikely to be a deal breaker. If you want to apply to Oxford, but are hesitant because of your past academic record like GCSEs, I'd still encourage you to apply. At the end of the day, the only way to totally assure failure is just not to try. Is Oxford Engineering all theory? The answer to this question is no. The Oxford Engineering course is quite theory intensive, but it has important practical components and we have an average of one lab a week. Unfortunately, due to COVID restrictions, labs are currently virtual and we cannot access physical lab spaces. However, in a normal first year, we would have done several practicals by this point, including bridge building, tensile testing, and electrical circuit analysis. Next up is a question about computer operating systems. Would I recommend Windows or Mac OS for engineering? I personally use Windows on my own PC, though I have used Mac OS quite extensively in high school. Now, as a hardcore gamer, I have always been a little bit deterred from getting a Mac, mainly because they have a bad reputation for game compatibility and performance, especially for the price. For most of the basic things on my degree, either operating system will work fine. However, some specialised engineering software like MATLAB and SOLIDWORKS are often incompatible with macOS, especially on older versions, though this is increasingly changing. 
So overall, if you currently own a Mac, it will probably work just fine. However, if you were buying a new PC specifically for starting an engineering degree, I'd encourage you to get one that runs Windows. Linux is another operating system that people use, but I do not want to open that can of worms today. How much free time do you have during term? The short answer is not much. The nature of an Oxford degree is that you are extremely busy all term, then have long vacations in between where you have much more free time. During my second term studying at Oxford, my average working hours have been from 8.30am to 8pm, including probably three and a half hours worth of breaks for lunch, dinner and an afternoon walk. Usually, I tend to take more time off during the weekends, but it varies depending on my workload. In the evenings when I'm not studying, I tend to relax on Discord with my friends, or if I have the energy, work on producing new content for Oxcentric. Time for some questions about studying. Firstly, what are my study strategies? I think other students have a lot more impressive and developed techniques for studying than I do, to be honest. The bulk of my revision methods can be summed up as do pass paper questions, make condensed notes, and explain similar problems to other students to reinforce your own understanding. Perhaps a hot take in the study community, but I personally only take breaks when I need them as opposed to actively scheduling them in. I find this helps me maintain a better uninterrupted workflow and helps me feel less guilty when I'm being unproductive as I no longer feel obligated to only take breaks in certain prescribed times. Again, I appreciate it's not what works for everyone, but it's what works for me. What is the thing I find hardest about studying? I think one of the hardest things for me about studying is being able to compartmentalise work and life. In a normal job, you clock in, you work a certain number of hours, and then you go home. In my degree, there is always more work to be done, and it's hard to know when to draw the line between focusing on academics and on other projects. This is something exacerbated by lockdowns. Last term I had the welcome distractions of face-to-face -face social and choir, which did help to combat this issue. However, this term, I find that even when I'm doing something objectively productive, like applying for internships or working on creating new videos, I still feel guilty and have a nagging sense that I am neglecting my academics somehow. This isn't something with a quick fix, but it's something I want to improve at for the sake of my mental health. This next question was very interesting and certainly got me thinking. How collaborative have you found the other students on your course? And do you see them more as peers or competitors? To answer the first part, I found that all the engineering students I know personally are very happy to work collaboratively. Working together comes in a few different forms in my degree. The most common type of collaboration at the moment is just a quick message to verify an answer or see if someone can give you a hint on a problem sheet question. However, there is also more substantial one-on-one -on -one collaboration. For example, me and my tutorial partner will often video calls discuss a problem sheet in depth, especially if we've both found it difficult. Additionally, I'm always thinking of new ways to collaborate. This term I've experimented with creating unofficial community mark schemes for problem sets, which have been moderately successful. All that said, I consider myself quite a slow and meticulous worker who tends to do his best thinking in a quiet and undisturbed environment. For that reason, I find that striking a good balance between independent and collaborative work is essential to maintaining my own productivity. To answer the second part, I consider all the engineers I know and have worked with personally as my peers. As someone who is chronically competitive, I'm quite content to see other people as my peers because I know that seeing them as mainly competitors would lead to me putting more pressure on myself and being unnecessarily stressed. This question also got me thinking about whether other students would agree, so I set up some polls in a main Oxford Engineering group chat and my college's engineering group chat. For the wider cohort, I found that 88% of respondents saw other students more as peers, and 12% saw them more as competitors. Surprisingly, despite being a smaller sample, my college's group chat rendered very similar results. So overall, we can pretty clearly conclude that the majority of engineers surveyed saw other students more as peers than competitors. Our next question is about roller coasters, one of my favourite things to talk about. Do I prefer Nemesis or Nemesis Inferno? Some context for the uninitiated, Nemesis is a roller coaster at Alton Towers in Staffordshire, and Nemesis Inferno is its sister roller coaster at Thorpe Park in Surrey. My verdict? Nemesis all the way. Nemesis is an absolute masterclass in roller coaster design. It is intense, it has an awesome theme, and the way it interacts the terrain truly elevates the experience. I must admit, I am rather biased towards Nemesis, seeing it is my most ridden roller coaster of all time, and I have made a lot of great memories at Alton Towers. 
So whilst I find Nemesis Inferno very fun, there's no way it can beat the original. What would be your dream job? Rather fittingly, my dream job would be to design roller coasters. I have been a huge theme park fan for around 8 years now, and I've been designing my own virtual roller coaster concepts for about 5 years at that time. Designing rides professionally sounds like both a challenge and great fun, and it would be an absolute dream come true to ride a roller coaster that I had designed in real life. And finally, do you have any advice for Oxford students starting in October 2021? Good question. To any incoming students, get working on your coping mechanisms now. I personally advocate a good mixture of listening to My Chemical Romance albums and screaming at the wall. <laughs> Jokes aside, my main message would be to get excited. You've put a lot of hard work in and I really hope you think it pays off. Studying at Oxford is absolutely not easy. Some days you will stare blankly at that problem sheet or essay and wish for the ground to swallow you up. But other days, you'll crack that question you were struggling with, or your tutor will give you some really nice feedback, or you'll get to do something that only an Oxford student gets to do. That is what makes studying at Oxford worth it, and that is what you will remember. At the end of the day, you will be studying at a top institution in one of the most beautiful cities in the world. What more could you really want from an undergraduate degree? Another piece of advice I'd give is to be patient. Patient with your degree and patient with yourself. In my first week of problem sheets, I spent three hours on a single question and made no progress. And it really stressed me out. Not knowing all the answers can feel terrifying, especially if you've always been successful academically, but it's something that will happen at university no matter where you study. Learning to take things slowly, be rigorous, and understand the concepts rather than just reach the answers is essential in thriving here in Oxford. Those starting in 2021 should be doing so under much more normal circumstances, so keep up the hard work and you've got a lot to look forward to. Alright, I'm going to end the Q&A here. Thank you all so much for your questions. I'm sorry that I couldn't answer all of them in this video, but I wanted to keep it at least a bit concise and answer the ones that I did choose in a good amount of depth. If you'd like to see more Q&As in future or have other video ideas for the channel, feel free to leave a comment. I've really enjoyed doing this and I hope you found my answers useful. In the meanwhile, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you around. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe for more content. Past paper questions, sir. So